Hello. First of all, I would like to thank you, Theo, for giving me the opportunity to participate in this symposium. I would like also to thank Audris Ploplis for his creative cooperation in this project, Siberia Souls. I would like to briefly introduce my instrument. This is an original Lithuanian woodwind hornpipe. This instrument is not a pure folk instrument. It was created on the basis of a 19th century folk instrument called Birbini. Around 1925, Lithuanian masters and musicians began their research for a chromatic instrument made from a simple diatonic Birbini. The chromatic Birbini was invented in 1950. So while this instrument looks antique, it's rather young. I could talk a lot about the history of this instrument. I have written several scientific articles on that topic, but that is not the main subject of this conversation. I just want to say briefly that the name of this instrument, Birbini, was already mentioned in the 17th and 18th centuries. There are no drawings left or other objects by which we could know exactly what this instrument looked like and where it was played. Was it just a shepherd's instrument or was it played in castles as well? The fact is that from the remaining descriptions we know it was a reed instrument, double or single reed, my instrument is made of pier wood with a cow horn attached to the end, an ebonet mouthpiece and a clarinet reed tied with a string. The aim of this talk is to present some examples of the Birbinius integration into electroacoustic music, while trying to answer the question what motivates foreign composers to pay attention to this Lithuanian instrument? What are the possibilities of application of the Birbini in their compositions? As for the context of electroacoustic music in Lithuania, of course, there are composers, especially young ones, who try themselves in this field. But when it comes to the Birbini and electroacoustic music, the situation is quite different. And this is a paradox, because this instrument seems to be more interesting to foreign composers than to Lithuanian ones, especially if we are talking about electroacoustic music. The reason may be very simple. Birbini is traditionally considered as a folklore or folk instrument in Lithuania. In other words, it's considered an imperfect instrument which I deeply believe is a completely wrong approach. With a modern chromatic Birbini, it's possible to play not only folklore music, but also classical, baroque repertoire, jazz and complex compositions of modern music. Among Lithuanian composers in this field, I would like to mention Algirdas Klova, who composed Sonata Concert for Birbini and tape in 1983. In this talk, I would like to briefly introduce the composers who created compositions specifically for the Lithuanian instrument Birbini. And I think that these compositions are among the best examples of the integration of the Birbini into electroacoustic music. Zad Moltaka, born in Lebanon in 1967, Zad Moltaka is a composer and visual artist. As far as will fill up the time. This work was created in 2016 for the Birbini and Fixed Media. The Birbini's part is written according to traditional Western notation, but in certain parts of the melody, elements of Middle Eastern and Arabic music appear. Quarter tones, complex rhythmic structures, 
and pitch modulation between notes. In Arab music these elements are sung by voice or performed with stringed instruments. And in Berbini's performance practice this is a new phenomenon. At the beginning of the piece a text from William Shakespeare's play Macbeth is heard. William Shakespeare Macbeth's Act 3, Scene 1 Macbeth Is it far you ride? Banquo As far, my lord, as will fill up the time. Twixt the supper, go not my horse, the better. I must become a borrower of the night for a dark hour or twain. Carol Robinson is a Franco-American composer, clarinetist and bourbonist. Long fascinated by the extended possibilities of live and fixed electronic music, Carol has written numerous pieces for acoustic instruments and electronics. Billows. This work is for Berbini and live electronics. It consists of 12 parts and its duration is about 45 minutes. Here is how Carol Robinson herself presents her work. Visualize someone sitting in a room and playing an instrument. The instrument is connected by various microphones to a computer with a max MSP patch that receives and transforms the instrumental sound before dispatching it to loudspeakers situated on either side of the musician. The patch generates pitch shifts and subtle harmonic fields sheathed in nascent feedback. The sound shimmers and floats, reacting to itself and the particular acoustic of the room. The sound mass creates its own flux and logic, varying from performance to performance and from room to room. There is no overdubbing or other manipulation, simply sound vibrating freely in the space.
Swiss composer Jörg Frey. Composition Tu Schellach for Birbinia Solo. In English, To Touch the Space. The composition consists of 12 parts. It's a Birbinia Solo piece. Originally, it was an acoustic composition. It so happened that I had the idea of giving this piece an electroacoustic character. After informing the composer, I performed this piece using an effects processor and live visualization. Video fragment from the International Woodwind Festival Medinius 2020 in Lithuania. I would like also to mention the South African composer Michael Blake and his work Tombo du Moseo Moirane for soprano Birbini and tape. This composition is a tribute to Michael Moseo Moirane, one of the most foremost composers who worked in South Africa from 1930s till, the, till his death in 1980. Michael Blake created the tape at the Alpha Studio in Visby, Sweden, in 2011 and composed the solo part for the Birbini in 2013. He worked on it with me in Vilnius in the summer of 2013. The video premiere of this work took place on the 6th of December 2020 at Baud Electrons. This video is also available on my official YouTube channel. In order not to repeat myself, I will not show the video of this piece today.
Uh, now I would like to present uh, my composition, which I created in 2008. It's called Water Serpents. The composition Water Serpents is performed with Birbini, Formanta analog drum machine, and effects processes. I performed this composition for the first time in 2008 in Cuba at the Electroacoustic Music Festival Spring in Havana. The video is synchronized with the fixed media soundtrack. The Brebenius part is improvisational and sound effect modules are used to change its timbre. I used the classical parallel effects processor and Sonic DP4 for the, for the Brebenius timbre modulation. Finally, I would like to present Siberia Souls. This composition was inspired by a series of photos compositions of the same name, created by the Lithuanian-American artist Audris Ploplis.
I use these photos as a source of inspiration, as a kind of musical score. The main element of this musical composition is the dated letters and diaries of the exiles. It's a kind of metaphysical connection with thousands of innocent people, Lithuanians, Latvians, Estonians, who were forcibly deported to Russia and Siberia. Siberia Souls is a monument to the exiles. They were never able to return to their native homes. Their bodies were left lying in the cold Siberian land. And their souls will always remain in our memory and will always float among us. This topic is extremely relevant even today against the background of Russian invasion of Ukraine. The same repressions, the same killings of innocent people as in Stalin's time. The duration of the composition is 15 minutes. It consists of three parts. First part called Occupiers. For this part, I created several instruments consisting of audio samples symbolizing the Russian occupation. Speeches of Stalin and Lenin, weapons, anthem of Soviet Union, television and radio recordings praising Lenin and Soviet system. Second part, trains. People were transported to Siberia in livestock wagons. The train is one of the main symbols of the exiles that have remained in our consciousness. In this part you can hear instruments, MOOC sequences and special effects that symbolize trains. I also created train effect with Brebini and Max for Life program. The third part called Souls. In the third part I used voices that read some letters and diaries of the exiles. The dates you hear in the recording are pronounced in English and Lithuanian. These dates are noted in the diaries and letters of the exiles. These voices are their souls, floating in the space and time. We don't know their names, but their words affect us. They penetrate as deeply with all their experiences. Siberia Souls was performed and recorded live with Ableton Live 11, MOOC DFAM semi-modular analog percussion synthesizer, MOOC Mother 32 and Brebini. The only instrument I recorded separately was Brebini. This composition can be performed by one, two or three performers. In summary, the integration of Lithuanian Birbini into musical technologies, or vice versa, the integration of musical technologies into the Birbini, can reveal and highlight new technologies, temporal and aesthetic possibilities of expression in the Birbini's performance. It's interesting to note that the interest of foreign composers in the Birbini is determined not so much by its historical origins, but is rather associated with our national inspirations. Therefore, the Birbini is accepted as instrument with a unique timbre and technical capabilities. It's noteworthy that the attention of foreign composers to this instrument, their compositions, works performed, shows the increasing interest in the Birbini at the international level. Thanks for your attention. And now, I invite you to listen to the composition Siberia Souls. <laughs> 